with the approximation of derivatives. I think it's one of the introductory concepts to, to numerical methods in general for any differential problems. Uh, but we will be exploiting this concept uh, intensively when talking about fine difference method. Uh, so let me start with something like that. Like imagine that you've got some local space discretization, space actually along just one axis, one dimensional. Um, discretization and we do have some function let's call the function f uh, and we've got three three nodes the ith node i plus first node i minus one and we've got three corresponding function values at each of these locations. And what we are interested in is imagine that based on these three discrete f values, what we are interested in, we are interested in calculating the first, the first derivative with respect to x. Well, let it be x. Mm. And we are interested uh, at, at the ith node in the approximation of this of this value. So what can you do? Like without without um, derivation, it's probably pretty easy to guess the first derivative is the slope. So whatever you, you'd like to do is you can for example use this value and that value to calculate the slope of the function and say, well this slope is is some approximation of the slope in this Point. So what we can write is f i plus 1 minus f i divided by delta x. Uh, it's, the, it's something that is called the forward difference. Like it takes the, um, the, the point that we were, that at which we are interested in calculating the derivative and takes one, one node forward. So it's a forward difference. Um, very, very similarly, what you can do is you can take the, the backward difference. What would it be? It would be writing fi minus fi minus 1 divided by delta x. Obviously, two different var values, but each of them is a, is a valid approximation to the first derivative at the node i. Why is it a valid approximation? Because if, you're, if you keep decreasing delta x, then the value that is calculated by this, uh, by this, um, by, by, by this formula will approach the correct value of the first derivative calculated analytically. Um, so these are two ways to calculate that. The other option is to, uh, to write the central difference. And the central difference would go like this, df dx at i equals, any ideas? F uh, i plus 1 minus f i minus 1. Exactly. Over to dx. Exactly. So we, what we are doing, we are basically taking That's true. Or maybe even not, to be honest. No, I think I saw the mm. central difference scheme in one of our projects with not constant discretization. And, and even for... It was a little more... Yeah. Okay, this might be. Mm. So what basically what we are doing is we are saying that the slope calculated out of, the, of, out of these two points will be a good approximation to the first derivative at the central point. Clear? Intuitive? Okay, so let's quit with intuition. Uh, right now, this, this one is intuitive, but we need to have a consistent way to, to calculate any approxi approximation of any derivative 
um, that we might want to have. And the consistent way is the following, just, and let's focus right now. What we will be doing is we will be uh, making use of the Taylor expansion series. And what we, the procedure is, okay, let's assume you are interested in calculating some derivative, some derivative, because this might be first, second, third derivative, or it can even be any, any combination of derivatives that you would imagine. Uh, imagine that we're interested in, in deriving the approximate formula for the derivative at node i. What, you, what we would do, um, and let's take the example that we are interested in, um, let's take the example that we are interested in calculating the second order derivative. How can we approximate this? Uh, so the consistent procedure is, let's write the Taylor expansion series for the function value at node i plus one. And this one is f i plus one equals f i plus, mm, well, let me use, let me use h as delta x, it will be a bit more convenient, plus h first derivative at i um, plus one half h square second derivative also at i plus one sixth mm, a third derivative at point i plus etc. Okay, uh, let's write something extremely obvious. Fi is nothing else as fi. Uh, then let's do the same fi minus one is, and we are expanding into, into, in the Taylor expansion series. So again, this one is fi minus h fi first derivative, again, the mm, plus one half h square second derivative at node i minus the odd terms always have the, like they do not have negative sign, but, uh, but h is so to say negative. Mm, so h to the power of three, third derivative plus, etc. And right now, let's focus. What we want to do is the following. We want to come up with some formula, and the formula would be some linear combination. We want to come up with the formula that, that will that will leave us with the second derivatives only, because this is what we're interested in. We're interested in getting approximation to that. So this term is something that we're interested in. This one is something that we're interested in. Uh, now, this one should vanish completely from our linear combination. This one should also be dropped. Um, and, well, we will have everything else, but as you can see with decreasing age, these terms vanish like they are higher order terms, and we can simply neglect that, and this is the approximation that we are doing. Um, so, we can write that fi, the second derivative, would be something like taking a times f i plus one plus b times this times c times that a 
okay? And we want to approximate the second derivative by this linear combination. So what we need to do is we need to write the, the system of linear equations that once fulfilled give us exactly that what we want. So let's try to do that. Um, we know that we need to, we require that fi vanishes completely. So let's see, okay, a times this means for fi, it means that how much of fi would we get? a plus b plus c must equal zero because we don't want to have it completely. Then, okay, let's follow this again. a, what do we have for fi prime? We've got a times h, well, nothing from here, minus c times h equals zero. Uh, okay, we are moving forward. fi second derivative uh, is, again, one half h, a h squared plus one half c h squared and we want this to give us exactly one and we need to live with that that probably all, all terms that follow will not vanish and this will be the this will be the error that we are making in the approximation. Uh, so let's solve it quickly. It looks like A equals C from this, this equation. So basically what we can have here is we already see that uh, that's A H square equals one, so a equals one over h squared, then c equals one over h squared, uh, and we need to calculate that. And obviously, to have it zero, this means that b equals minus two over h squared. Yeah, clear? Okay, so the final formula, let me erase the first, the first derivatives. So the final formula is second derivative of function f at Note i can be approximated as f i minus one minus two f i plus f i plus one divided by h squared. Familiar with that? Probably the summary for mo most of you, uh, but I wanted to reintroduce this concept of the uh, consistent procedure once again because we um, this will be an important step while when we move to find difference method.